Welcome to a code report solution video. In this video, we're going to be going over the solution to problem two from hacker rank hour rank 27 entitled maximizing the profit. The question states a hardware company is building a machine with exactly three hardware components. There are many components available and the profit factor of each component is known. The profit obtained by the machine is the product of the profit factors of the three hardware components used to build that machine. However, there is a catch. Three different components with numbers i less than j less than k can be used to build the machine if and only if their profit factors meet the following condition, pi less than pj less than pk. Calculate the maximum possible profit that a valid machine consisting of three components can have or decide that it's impossible to build any machine. Complete the function maximum profit, which takes in the integer array denoting the profit factors of all components and return a single integer denoting the answer. And note that the constraints on the problem, the size of our array is going to be uh, no greater than 3 times 10 to the 5th, and the values of our profit factors are going to be uh, between negative 10 to the 6th and 10 to the 6th. So let's take a look at the example that HackerRank provided us with. So here is our example. You can see that we have one negative number and the rest are positive numbers. And HackerRank is telling us that the solution to this uh, vector of profits is going to be taking uh, the components with the profit factors 2, 6, and 8 and combining those to get an answer of 96. So there are other valid machines, a uh, valid machine being uh, any components that when combined have their profits in strictly uh, in strictly increasing order. So 2, 6, 8 is strictly increasing. Negative 10, 1, and 8 is also strictly increasing, but when you multiply those, you'll get negative 80, which is not greater than 96. And so you just continue to find all valid uh, possible machines and take the maximum of the profits of those valid machines. So note that you know combining uh, the first three components uh, with the profit factors 10, 2, and negative 10 isn't valid because that's in decreasing order, not strictly increasing. So if we take a look at this a little bit closer and we remove the negative 10, so let's just focus on the positive numbers, how can we think about this? So if we look at an element, we'll take 6 uh, for now, and then we have a multiset of the elements to the left of it and a multiset of the elements to the right of it. So we'll call this one left and this one right. And basically what we're going to want to do is find the uh, greatest element that is less than our current element in left and then find the greatest element in right given that it's greater than our current element. So uh, for right we just look at the end and check is this greater than our current element and for our left we're going to use a modified version of a, a function called uh, lower bound which is a method of uh, the set and multi-set data structures. And so once we find these two values if they exist we will multiply them together and then keep track of what our current maximum is and then set it equal to be the maximum of its, of its current value and this new calculated value. And when we move to the next element, what we're going to do is push this 6 into our multiset and then take the next element out of our right multiset. So we're moving to 1, so 1 will get deleted from right, 6 will get added to left, and then we can continue uh, to do this. So you'll note that once we're at 1, we don't have an element that is less than it, so we can't create a valid uh, machine with 1 being the middle element. And so this is how we would treat uh, our algorithm if it was all positive numbers. But the negative numbers make it a little bit more complicated. So let's take a look at an example, and we have some negative numbers here. So once again, looking at 7, uh, we know that because our numbers have to be strictly increasing, that if our current element is positive, that the uh, element to the right is also going to have to be positive uh, when we find our valid machine. And so that means that B, so if we call this element B and our element to the right C and our element to the left A, if B times C is positive, regardless of whether A is positive or negative, we know we want it to be as large as possible. Uh, because if it's positive, we just get a large positive number, and if it's a negative number, we still want it to be as large as possible meaning as least negative as possible because then we end up with the smallest negative number possible. That being said, if our current element is negative, it changes a little bit. So it depends on what uh, the positive or negative sign is on the value to the right, so from our right multiset. Uh, so if that value is negative, we know that this times this, b times c, is going to be positive. And in order to maximize our profit, we know that means we want to find uh, the negative value that's closest to zero. So uh, the smallest negative, if you will. Um, 
and and we know that because our current element is negative that in order to form a valid machine all the values that are valid from our left multiset are also going to be negative so we're going to end up choosing between negative 9 and negative 5 we want negative 5 and that'll give us negative 10 as our total if we were to choose uh, negative 9 that would end up giving us uh, negative 90 which we don't want because negative 10 is greater than that obviously um, However, if, if the element on our right, C, is a positive number, that means we want the, uh, the smallest or the most negative number we can find. Uh, so here we're going to end up choosing negative 9, and that's going to give us uh, 144, negative 72 times uh, negative 2. So this is a little bit involved, and it might end up, you know, we have to write a bit of code that says, you know, if this is, uh, if our current element is negative, and then our C is positive or negative, so that's a little bit involved. So what we can do is just find each of these values. We'll call them A1, A2, uh, B is our current element, C1, and C2, and then just try all the possible combinations with a1 and C1, A1 and C2, A2 and C1, and A2 and C2. And if we just take the maximum of each of these combinations, we're sure to find our maximum product for our current element B. Um, so that's what's going to inform our algorithm. We're going to loop through uh, in linear time our uh, vector of profits. And as we move from element to element, we're going to do our insertion and our deletion from our multisets in log n time. And note that for A1, A2, uh, C1, and C2, we're going to use the following in order to set them. So for A1 and C2, we can just look at uh, the beginning and the last element. And then for A2 and C1, we can make use of uh, two functions called lower bound and upper bound. So let's walk through part of an example. We start by looking at element negative 9. At this point, our left multiset is empty, so we're not going to be able to form any valid uh, machines. Moving on to our next element, uh, looking at element 1, we then push negative 9 into our left multiset and remove 1 from our right multiset. At this point, we try all possible combinations of A1 and A2, which both point to negative 9, and C1 and C2 with B, and we'll find that negative 9 times 1 times 2 is going to give us our highest product, which is going to be negative 18. Then we move to our next element, 2. We push our 1 into our left multiset, remove the 2 from our right multiset, and at this point, so we're going to try our different combinations of A1, A2, C1, and C2. And uh, we'll find that 1 times 2 times 8, which gives us 16, will be our new maximum. We move to our next element, negative 5. Once again, push our 2 into the left multiset, remove the 5 from our right multiset. And at this point, A1 and A2 are both going to be pointing to negative 9. And C1 will be negative 2, C2 will be 8. If we find the best combination, we'll find that negative 9 times negative 5 times 8 is equal to 360, which will become our new maximum. Taking a look at one more element, we move to element 7. We push our negative 5 into our left multiset, remove 7 from our right multiset. And at this point, our best combination will be 2 times 7 times 8, which will give us 112, which will not be greater than 360. So we'll continue to do this until the end of our vector. And at this point, we should have our maximum product. So let's take a look at our code. So here are some helper functions before we get to our main function. We're just using a type alias ll to represent long long because that's going to be all over our code. We're going to set, uh, initialize some of our variables and use this min, which is going to be the uh, lower limit of our long long. So we'll just refer to this as min throughout the code. Here is a first less than function. So when I referred to using the lower bound, uh, to find a2 uh, and there was an asterisk this was the function that I was referring to so note we're using a uh, function reduced uh, deduced return type which is going to require us using C++14 as our language and uh, all this is doing basically is making one call to lower bound uh, so if you're not familiar with lower bound and upper bound uh, click the link here to watch a quick video that I made explaining them uh, but you'll make one call to lower bound. If it's equal to uh, the past the last element, we'll do a uh, pre-decrement. Uh, and then we are just going to loop until uh, the value that our iterator is pointing to is no longer greater than or equal to our current value. And that's because lower bound basically is the first uh, greater than or equal to. And because we're dealing with a multiset, we're not guaranteed uh, what iterator, what this iterator is going to be pointing to. If we have multiple values um, from our 
in in our multi set. Uh, so if we have like five tens, uh, we, we're not guaranteed that we're going to get the first ten. We could get the fifth ten. So we need to iterate until we are at the first value that is less than our value that we passed in. And at the end, we're just returning uh, either the pass the last element or the iterator uh, if it's actually uh, we found a valid value that is less than our our value that we passed in. And this is a simple calculation function, so we're passing an A, B, and C. As long as A and C aren't the minimum values, so they actually have values, uh, we are going to uh, return uh, the product of them. And we also are going to just double check that uh, our conditions are met, that A is less than B and B is less than C. Otherwise, we'll also return the minimum. So let's take a look at our main function. So here's our main function, maximum profit. It takes a vector of long longs profits as a parameter and returns a long long as its result, which will be the maximum uh, product we find. And then at the top, we construct our two multisets, right and left. Uh, right is going to be constructed using a range constructor so that it is initialized to have all the values that are inside our vector profits. And left will just use the default constructor and will be constructed to be empty. We then uh, declare our result res, which will set to be equal to our minimum. And then we enter our range base for loop. So uh, inside this, we're going to declare four long longs, A1, A2, C1, and C2, as mentioned in the visual example. And then the first thing we do is we delete uh, one of the values in uh, B in our right uh, multiset uh, for B. And we're going to do this because we're currently looking at B, so we don't want that to be in our right multiset. We then enter our if statement. If right and left are not both empty, we then do the following. We're going to set A1, A2, and C1 and C2. So A1 and C2 are the easiest. They're, we're just looking at the uh, smallest value in our uh, left multiset and our largest value in our right multiset. And then for A2 and C1, A2 is using the first less than function. So as long as we're able to find a value that's less than our current element B, we're going to return that. Otherwise, we just return minimum. And uh, the same thing for C1, except we're using the upper bound function. So uh, we're going to, if we're able to find a value that's greater than B, uh, we're going to return that. Otherwise, the minimum as well. And so once we have A1, A2, C1, and C2, we can just make four calls to our calc function, passing in the different combinations of these, and we can set uh, uh, our res to be the maximum of its current value and the value calculated by this. So note we're passing an A1, C1, A2 with C1, A1 with C2, and A2 with C2. And at the very end, we want to make sure to insert our value B uh, for the next iteration of our range base for loop. And at the end, as long as res is not equal to the minimum, we want to output the res. But if it is, that means we weren't able to find a valid machine. So we should output uh, negative 1. The LL just stands for long, long. And note that uh, Dennis was reviewing this code, and he all, he pointed out that we don't actually need to have left being a multiset. Uh, we do need it for right because we need to make sure we're not uh, deleting, you know, uh, one element when there's actually uh, you know four elements there. So we need to keep track of how many are in are still in. Uh, the right uh, multiset, but for left we only care about what is there. So we can actually use a set for left. So thanks for Dennis for catching this and also uh, for just reviewing the code in general and catching a few other code improvements. And so the last thing to talk about is the time complexity. As mentioned before, we're doing a linear loop over the elements and profits, and we make a call to find uh, first less than, which calls lower bound, upper bound, then insert, and all of these are log n operations. So our uh, final time complexity is going to be n log n. As always, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Make sure to follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start. You can find all of the code that I use in my videos on my GitHub page. All of the links are in the description down below. And finally, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of my upcoming videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.